Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here at the Joe Boo Sports Report Sports Desk. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, as well as you ladies. We have some more news on Michael Irving. Um, the case that has been evolving, where it seems like Michael Irving is actually beginning to get some traction here. A little background on the story, of course, is Michael Irving was in Arizona to be covering the uh, Super Bowl for NFL Network as well as ESPN as one of the featured former players and sports personalities. Um, he was there, of course, the week before the Super Bowl, before a lot of the shows and things had arrived, doing some tapings and things on Sunday and was at a bar doing a taping and came back to the Marriott Hotel renaissance and was in a bar having pictures and stuff taken with fans and things and so on and had an employee of marriott have a conversation that took place over about 45 seconds to a minute there are three witnesses who say that nothing happened this uh, employee has accused michael irving of we don't know exactly what and made a phone call, Marriott did, to ESPN and NFL Network that got him removed from the telecast with no response from ESPN or NFL Network or even if they even talked to Michael Irvin. Um, it sounds like they basically went on the word of the Marriott Hotel. The Marriott Hotel also went to his room and said that he must be removed from the hotel um, and that there's a videotape. And he basically said... I don't think anything happened. Um, this alleged incident, again, happened in public with three witnesses that have already are about to be subpoenaed to be in the civil lawsuit. There is no criminal lawsuit because there were never any police involved. There were no charges that were brought. The police department has nothing. So what we're left with is is a lot of questions on what actually transpired. Okay, digging a little further, within a couple of days, actually uh, a little over a week and a half ago, Michael Irvin filed a $100 million lawsuit against the Marriott uh, Corporation as well as the individual who accused him and was stacking up win after win. Basically, the court in Dallas had deemed the tape to be as well as other evidence to be brought forth against michael Irvin. the marriott corporation actually petitioned to have the case move from a texas case uh, a texas court to uh, federal court now here's where it starts to get interesting we have talked about this a couple times in a couple other videos where the judge may be more friendly to the individual as opposed to the corporation. And this case seems to be rocketing down the course because we now have some more information because originally by last Monday, Marriott was supposed to turn over the film, if they have a film, and whom they spoke with, with NFL Network as well as ESPN and so forth and other various evidence which Marriott did not turn over. They peti petitioned the court to be moved. So the case has been moved to federal court. So according to Michael Gilkin, and let's go through um, exactly what has transpired because I do not want to get this wrong. I want to make sure that we have the latest information on this. A Marriott employee has accused Michael Irvin of misconduct, and the accusation got Michael Irvin pulled from a pair of jobs during Super Bowl week. Irvin has responded with a $100 million lawsuit and an aggressive effort to get the surveillance video that Marriott has in his possession that would demonstrate what actually happened between Irvin and his accuser. The federal judge that now presiding over the case has given Marriott a firm deadline responding Irvin's request for the video. Marriott has until 5 p.m. Central Time on Tuesday to respond. So, Marriott must respond to returning over the video. Now, here's the, here's the kicker here. That doesn't mean that the video must be produced by them. It only means that Marriott must submit an actual response. 
so in other words they have to say well here's the reason why we don't want to turn it over yet we want to petition this to go elsewhere a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot delaying is what they basically do um so they can reply or they can turn over the tape Marriott previously rejected the request when the case was pending in state court, firing off a predictable and common assertion of a client, uh, attorney client privilege and work for uh, doc. Uh, basically, they're saying, oh, well, you know, this we can't turn this over because, you know, this is between us and our, our client. So if Marriott follows through with the same thing, basically saying that this is, you know, a, a client um, privilege. Michael Irvin's lawyers will fire on a motion to compel the production of the materials and a judge will have to make it decide. So Mary is basically going to say, no, 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 we're not going to put this because this is because, you know, this is between the client, or, you know, this is kind of like, uh, you know, it's just privilege, presidential privilege and stuff. You can't, you can't see it because we deemed it that, you know, trust it. We know what's on. Yeah. Right. Okay. So in which case, more than likely, that's what's going to happen. Michael Irvin's people will go ahead and say, no, nah, that's some bull jiggity, and want the judge to decide if they do or do not have to produce it. So it would be hard to think that the courts would say to Marriott, oh, it's okay that you don't show the tape. Because this is the only evidence that is against Michael Irvin. This is it. We got three witnesses here that say nothing happened or what could happen. And, and again, I'm not an attorney. I'm not pretending to play an attorney here on YouTube, but it would seem like if Marriott does not have a tape and doesn't produce a tape, let, let's just say that. Let's say hypothetically the court says, okay, Marriott, you don't have to produce the tape. But we're going to go to court on the situation. And so what you have now is you have Michael Irvin who says, I didn't do anything wrong. And he has not one, not two, but three people who were also there as eyewitnesses that say, we saw Michael Irvin. One of the guys said, you know, we know he didn't put his hands on her because he was talking about, you know, he had his hands at his side. And remembering and thinking that a man who's 56 years old versus somebody that's like me, 57, what great shape that he's in. So you got three witnesses along with Michael Irvin's word against, if they call her to the stand, Jane Doe. To me, that's four to one. It would be hard to say that you would discount the four witnesses or excuse me, the three witnesses of Michael Irving for the alleged victim without something to back up her story. Because we don't know if there's, that there's any witnesses to the contrary other than this tape. So this, to me, sounds like Marriott's got some explaining to do. And Marriott may be in a little bit deeper on this. And this is why I think that this case will eventually just be a check will be written under the table with a non-disclosure agreement without having fault. That's what I think that this is headed for. Um, again, good news for Michael Irving, bad news for Marriott. We're going to stay on top of the story as always, and we'll see where this goes. I hope that Michael Irving gets exonerated and that he can get his jobs back with NFL Network as well as ESPN although I don't know if he wants to work with them, if it ends up being that there was nothing that he did wrong for them to immediately go ahead and suspend him with no comment and so on, to me, it's kind of like you poisoned the well. But then again, money talks and BS walks. I'm Mark Holmes, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, Hit the thumbs up for me. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel as we continue to rebuild the Joe Boo Sports Report studio. I'll see you guys soon.